This problem asks us to find the area between two trigonometric functions. So um, when it says total area, sometimes that's a key that's telling you that the curves might cross, but you don't want to you don't want to allow the area to cancel um, because the because the the top the upper curve and the lower curve have kind of switched. So watch out for that in problems. Make sure you're always integrating the the higher curve minus the lower curve so you get a positive answer for the area. Let's look at these two curves. First off, um, one half the secant squared. We know if we were to draw the secant, let's see, it would come from the cosine, right? So we could start by drawing the cosine. And I'm just going to go from minus pi halves to pi halves. So actually my, my range is actually narrower, it's inside there. But cosine is normally 1, so the cosine, uh, the secant would be something like this with vertical asymptotes at uh, negative pi halves and positive pi halves because as um, as the cosine goes to zero then in the secant you've got one over tiny numbers and that's causing it to have vertical asymptote there. Um, now if we square it what's going to happen is um, it's going to kind of flatten it out a little bit here. We're going to get a shape kind of like this. And then we multiply by one half so it actually drops our shape down a little bit so it, it cuts our shape down to be something like this. So there's the graph of the secant squared. Now the sine squared, if you want to look at the graph of the sine squared, we know the sine is 0 and then it climbs up to 1 by the time you get to pi halves and it's down to negative 1 by the time you get to negative pi halves. So the graph looks something like this. But if you square the sine, what it'll do is first it will make this part that was negative positive, but it will also sort of flatten it out in here because the closer the value is to zero when you square it, the smaller it gets. And so it'll actually take it and kind of flatten it out like this. Now we've got a, we got four sine squared, so this is going to be um, stretched so that this maximum height here is four. So we put both graphs together. Here's minus pi halves and here's plus pi halves. And we're actually only going to um, between minus pi thirds and plus pi thirds. If you look originally, the this, this secant squared is up here at one half, and the sine squared is down here at zero. But then by the time we get to pi thirds, let's see, the cosine of pi thirds is one half, so the cosine squared would be one fourth, so the secant squared would be four. So by the time we get to, let's see, here's one half, one, one and a half, two. By the time we get to pi thirds, this the secant has climbed up to um, the level of 2. But let's look at 4 sine squared. The sine of pi thirds is root 3 over 2. So if you square it, you get 3 over 4. And 3 over 4 times 4 would be 3. So by this time, the sine has outgrown it. So if, if the graph of our secant looks something like this, and the graph of our sine squared term looks something like this, Oops, it's got to go all the way up to 3 here. Um, and we've got some point in between here where the two curves cross. So we need to ask, where is it that 1 half the secant squared of x is equal to 4 times the sine squared of x? Now solving this equation is going to be a little bit tricky here. What I'm going to do first is get the get the trigonometric functions alone on one side. So I'm going to multiply through by um, cosine squared, because cosine squared times secant squared makes 1. So I'll get 1 half on this side, and I'll have 4 times the sine squared of x times the cosine squared of x. Now I notice that this is actually kind of two identities in one. We have this identity that says 2 sine x cosine x is the same thing as sine 2x. Get that just from the, the the formula for the sine of a sum. If you have x plus x, you get sine of x cosine x plus cosine x times sine of x, and that makes two sine x cosine x. Now here I've got four sine four sine squared x cosine squared x. So if I break it up, I have a two sine x and a cosine x multiplied by another two, another sine x and a cosine x. So I have this, and applying that identity here, we really have the sine 
um, of 2x times the sine of 2x. So finally that says that the sine squared of 2x, these two curves cross, or the secant squared and the sine squared curves cross here, is where the sine squared of 2x is equal to 1 half. That would mean that the sine of 2x is either plus or minus 1 over root 2. Now, let's see, we recognize um, a couple angles in this range uh, where this would work. The first one would be if 2x was pi fourths, then x would be pi eighths. So notice you put pi eighths in here, you double pi eighths, and you get pi fourths, and the sine of pi fourths we know is 1 over root 2. Also, um, x equals negative pi eighths would work as well, because 2 times x then would be uh, negative pi force, and the sine of negative pi force is negative one over root negative one over root two. So we've located these two crossing points. There's one over here at pi eights, and there's one back on the left at negative pi eights. Now this is important because if we want to find the total area between these graphs, we want to add up all this area, where it's the sine that's the higher function, and add up all this area where the sine is higher. But then we want to add in all the area where the secant is higher. So we should set this up as, um, well, maybe because of the symmetry in the problem, we should set it up as, um, as maybe doubling two integrals. We could do the integral from 0 to pi eighths. In this region, it's the secant that's higher. So I'll take 1 half the secant squared of x minus 4 times the sine squared of x. And uh, I have that same area, this area, because of the fact that both of my functions are even. I can just double that area to get the area over this interval that's symmetric around the x-axis. Then I'll need to take the integral from pi eighths to pi thirds. Um, in this case, it's the sine, the 4 sine squared theta, that's the function that's up above, and it's the 1 half secant squared x, that's the 1 below. That would find all the area between pi eighths and pi thirds here, and I should double that. So I've determined um, the integral that I need to do. It's just a matter now of doing that integral. Just to make more space, I copied this integral over to the next slide. So if we go to the next slide, we have our integral here. Um, technically, if I multiply through, 2 times uh, 1 half would just make 1, and 2 times negative 4 would make uh, negative 8. Same thing here. I multiply this 2 through, it becomes 8 sine squared minus 1 secant squared. Now, the derivative of the secant, the antiderivative of the secant squared is easy because the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared, so that antiderivative is no problem. If you're talking about sine squared, you need to use the power reducing identity, which says this is equal to 1 half minus 1 half the cosine of 2x. That allows you to, to rewrite it. If we take 8 times sine squared, um, or say negative 8 times sine squared, then we have negative 4, and then positive 8 times 1 half would be plus 4 cosine 2x. Okay, so I think we can find an antiderivative now. And antiderivative of secant squared is the tangent of x. And then we have the antiderivative of negative 4, which would be negative 4x. And then the antiderivative of 4 cosine 2x, which I think is 2 sine 2x. Let's check that. When we take the derivative, the 2 comes through. The derivative sine is the cosine, evaluated at 2x times the derivative of the, of the inside, kicks out an extra 2, so we have 4 cosine 2x. Okay, so I've got my antiderivative. I need to evaluate that antiderivative between 0 and pi 8s. Now over here, my antiderivative is similar, so this time I end up with a, a negative 4, um, let's see, at negative 2 sine 2x, two is that right? Uh, yeah, negative 2 sine 2x, and um, antiderivative of my 4, this time, since it's positive 8 sine squared x, my 4 is positive, so we have plus 4x, 
and then we have uh, and root of secant squared would be the tangent of x. But this one's got a negative sign out in front, so it should be the negative tangent of x. So I have to evaluate that between pi eighths and pi thirds. Okay, now the, this should now be pretty straightforward. We need to figure out what's the tangent of pi eighths minus four times x. That'd be four times pi eighths. That'd be minus um, pi halves. And let's see, two times pi eighths would be pi fourths, and the sine of pi fourths is root two over two. So if we take two times root two over two, we just get plus root two. That's when we plug in pi eighths. Now when you plug in zero, the sine of zero is zero, negative four times zero is zero, and the tangent of zero is zero. So we really have nothing to uh, subtract for, at our lower bound. Okay, let's do. Let's take care of it here. Um, when we plug in pi thirds, uh, two times pi thirds is two pi thirds, but the sine is still root three over two. So if you take it times negative two, you get negative um, root three. And four times pi thirds would be four pi over three. And then the antiderivative of tangent is secant squared. Or, yeah, the tangent, sorry, we need the negative tangent at pi thirds. Okay, now minus, when we plug in pi eighths, two times pi eighths is pi fourths, and the sine of pi fourths is root two over two. So multiply that by, that neg that by negative two, and we have negative root two. If we plug in pi eighths, four times pi eighths is pi halves. And if we plug in, um, let's see, if we plug in pi eighths here, the tan we have uh, minus the tangent of pi eighths. Okay, so we have here the tangent of pi eighths. We have minus pi halves plus root two. And then from these other ones, we get minus root 3 and plus 4 pi over 3 and uh, minus the tangent of pi thirds. The tangent of pi thirds is root 3 minus minus root 2. So that would be plus root 2 and um, minus pi halves and plus the tangent of pi eighths. So let's gather all this together. We have we have a two a root two and a root two makes two root two. Got that. We got a negative root three and another negative root three makes negative two root three. We have a tangent pi eights and another tangent pi eights. So we have two times the tangent of pi eights. That takes care of those. And then we've got a f uh, 4 pi over 3. And finally, minus pi halves and another minus pi halves is uh, removing a full pi halves, or that's 3 pi over 3. So this last term becomes pi thirds. So we have, um, we have um, 2 root 2 minus 2 root 3 plus 2 times the tangent of pi eighths plus pi thirds as the answer for the area between those two curves.